Trey. Trey. One minute till Mike hot. We're gonna go three. Okay. It's nine o'clock on a Saturday. The home crowd still shuffling in. There's two DVCHC teams below me, each hoping to get a win. Hello out there, we're on the air. It's AAU Hockey Night tonight. Welcome to tonight's broadcast of Widener University Pride Hockey, live here on Breakout Sports Broadcasting. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, lads of all ages, live from the Ice Works Skating Center in Aston, Pennsylvania. My name is Trey Wright, joined alongside me is Carlo Pascal. We are, we are geared for a good one here this evening, Trey. Sorry to cut you off there, but we are geared for a good one here tonight, here between two really, really skilled AAU teams ready for this one this evening. Yes, it's another DVCHC matchup here tonight, and Widener looking to bounce back after being shut out last night against Kutztown, losing three in, uh, in a 3-0 shutout loss to Kutztown last night. Looking to bounce back against a Bucknell team that we haven't seen too much this season. Neither has anybody. Bucknell coming in only playing four games, but they've still on the winning side of in those games. A record of three and one coming into tonight. Meanwhile, the Pride with a record of seven, ten and one after last night's loss to Kutztown. But a couple of changes here for the pride in their roster, the biggest of which, Bobby Catalo, no longer on this Widener team, transferred to the Westchester Golden Rams Division II ACHA team over the winter. And in his place, we do have the return of Charles Lacane, number 38. He is back in the lineup, coincidentally, scored the game-winning goal for the DVCHC championship last year against Bucknell. So you couldn't have written a better return to the ice here for Lacane. Yeah, it's, it's great to have Lacane back on the ice. I was talking with Coach Kennedy of the Pride earlier this week about his return, talked about how such a great player he is. The leading point scorer last year for the Pride as well and able to get that game-winning goal last year going in, uh, in the DVCHC uh, final here against Bucknell. It's very fitting that he comes back for this Widener team for the start of the second semester here once again against Bucknell. Looking to pick up where uh, Bobby Catala left off. Also no longer here, uh, Nick Smith and Danny Mackley from this Widener forward unit. But going over the starters here tonight, first off with the pride, Jimmy Wines, Charlie Lacane, and Damon Bonzal, your starting forwards. Uh, Matthew Kennedy and Noah Gilbert, your starting deep pair, and Ryan Sweeney gets the start between the pipes here tonight. Stone Hallworth was in last night against Kutztown. And then on the Bucknell side of things, Marco Simchik, Noah Thorpe, Henry Luff, your starting three. On the blue line, it's Sam Bird, Leitner, Jake Rogers. And between the pipes for the Bison tonight, Will Strickler. But either way, we are going to step aside, have our starters announced here over on the other side, and then the national anthem, and then puck drop here between the Pride and the Bison. Before we get into that, though, just want to say a quick thank you for tuning into this one this evening. It is a big weekend for us here at Breakout Sports Broadcasting. A lot of games in not a lot of days. Fi a five-game weekend for us. We had a rider last night, a big win for them over Brain Athen. Rutgers earlier today getting a win over Stony Brook. And then Widener looking to make it a perfect 3-0 going into tonight. And then tomorrow we will have Rutgers once again at 6 p.m. tomorrow evening, taking on New Haven as 
we get set for this one here. Thank you for tuning into this one this evening. Edition of the National Anthem as we get ready for puck drop for game number 18 of the Widener University Pride season. Another look at the starting lineups here tonight. Wines, Lacan, and Bonzal, your top uh, forward threesome. Then you've got Kennedy and Gilbert on the blue line. Sweeney between the pipes here for this Widener team. Looking for a huge win in the DVCHC standings with playoffs on the horizon in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it is set for a big matchup here this evening. Like you said, big playoff implications here in this one. And we mentioned it earlier with the return of Lacane looking to pick up where he left off last year as we get set for this one here this evening. Lacane and Simchick will meet at the dot. The pen is to the paper for game number 18 and it's officially in the books. Bucknell starts off with a win, is taken away by Thorpe. He put, immediately puts one on Sweeney, but it goes about three feet over the bar. Buck right in front, taken away. Here comes Bonzal with it. He dishes it up to Wines. Two on three, back the other way. Wines will just dump it in, trying to get the ball rolling here. That was Wines who was crashing the net on Strickler. And here come the Bison, back the other way. Thorpe still dancing with it, trying to get around one winer. Skater, he does. Thorpe back with it. Was in Bonsall's skates. He's trying to clear it out, and he does in a neutral territory. And that was a good play there by Luft with that dangle there to get through as 
The Bison try and get through again. It's broken up and finally taken away here once again by Lacan, and it's moved out. That's Ryan Zagraki who's moved up to the forward position from the last since for the last time we've seen him. Comes back to Matthew Kennedy. He'll dish it back over to Connor Ogborn. First time those uh, two are on the ice here tonight. And it's into Bucknell territory, taken away there by the number 15 of Eric Azelius. Fontaine dishes it back to Ogborn, dancing with it at his own blue line. Puck right in the middle slot. Zagraki can't put a shot on net. Rimmed along the half wall, gets it to Fontaine. A good little deke move right in front. Zagraki could not get it to go. Kept in the zone there by Catron Bone. And it's a foot race forward. It's taken away by Bucknell, looking to get it out of their own end. Zagraki with the turnover behind the cage, dancing beneath the red line. And finally, it is cleared out in the race for the puck on the other end, trying to beat out the icing as Bucknell. And they do a great heads up play there from Ratner, able to beat out the icing. Zagraki back with it. Excuse me. That is Zagraki, number 89. He'll get it over to Ogborn. Ogborn back with the puck. It goes off of his skate where it comes over to Conway. Now Conway hit at the red line. Good standing uh, stand up hit there from Jake Rogers. And comes back over to Ratner. Puck right in front. Sweeney, puck did not come to him. Now Ogborn racing for it at the near wall. And it's finally cleared out of the zone there by Lacane. And I think all the way down. Icing waved off as it was tipped by a Bucknell skater. And the Bison starting in their own zone. And I think Kennedy was actually able to, bl to break that shot, or to, to block that shot, excuse me, as he was right in the middle there, right in the low slot, trying to push away the onrushing Bison player there from the middle. And I think he got either a piece of his stick or his leg on that as this goes back the other way. Simchik at the left circle trying to get in the high slot right there. Shot goes wide of net. And a good save there by Ryan Sweeney on the side of the net. His first test of the night, and he passes it with flying colors. And just a few clicks under three minutes here. We finally get our first shot on net, but we still have had a lot of excitement besides shooting on the net, Corolla. We've had a couple of hits. We had some good moments, and overall, shaping up to be a pretty good hockey game for both these teams. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's been a good game so far. Only one shot so far through the first three minutes or so of this game as we get ready for the draw to the right here of Ryan Sweeney. Three and three record, 3.47 GAA, 898 save percentage from Pottstown, PA. Class of 2024 as Widener goes back the other way. Was a possible two on one opportunity that was broken up by Bucknell, and they've got possession along the near or the far wall. Back the other way. Skating with it as a big hit there from a Widener skater. Turned over behind the cage, taken by there by Ratner. Ratner fighting with Gilbert for it. Gilbert trying to get it out. Caught in Ratner's skates. Gilbert still with it. Was trying to glove it down, but Ratner back with it. Ratner skating, trying to put one on net, and that goes wide. Comes back over to Jimmy McNally. Sticked in there right in front. He'll come back to Ratner. He has been all over this ice as he fights there with Poole for the put loose puck. Poole trying to kick it out of the zone. He'll backhand it in to neutral ice. Won't go far enough for an icing and the Pride get a much needed line change. Back the other way. Wines trying to take advantage of a defensive zone turnover. Bucknell trying to get it out. Brought back in there by Ogborn. The puck in neutral territory. Ogborn will stick it into the dasher boards. And it'll go back, but not far enough for an icing. The Bison back in their own end. Here comes Widener back with it. Tried to stick it away, but Bucknell mounting a charge. Two on two back the other direction. Now three on two if they hurry. That shot on Sweeney. He's able to glove that down, but the rebound pops out, and it comes back to Ogborn. Ogborn tried to get it up to Conway, but the pass too far in front of him, but not far enough an I, uh, for an icing again. And for those of you who have watched our previous streams, Owen Conway is now wearing number 13 compared to wearing 48 for our first four games. Stream for the prize, who finally in the correct jersey number is Conway, and we'll see what he's able to do in the new tarp. 
Yeah, for sure. Good to see him in the in the number 13 there as this one goes all the way down for an icing here on the Pride. Faceoff will come back into their own end. And it's been pretty slow to start this game here. Both teams, I think, just trying to figure each other out here to start this game. Only two shots, like I said, in favor of Bucknell here with five minutes gone in the first period. Yeah, Widener not able to test Will Strickler just yet as Sweeney will make a goal line save there and keep this game scoreless. Just a couple of seconds, under 15 minutes ago in the first period. Man, he had to reach back to get that puck. Had to go back and get that one. Nearly beat him over the head. He's like an outfielder trying to jump for it against the wall. Looking like Bryce Harper there. <laughs> Off the draw, it's won by Widener. Trying to get back to where it is Poole. Sticked in the corner there by Lacane, and it comes back out into the neutral zone. Backhanded behind. Thorpe will backhand it again, trying to circle the wagons. And here comes Simchick, a two-on-one of Bucknell is able to get it. Simchick behind the red line and is brought off the play there by Lacane. A good defensive play there. Simchick was looking for an interference call, but he won't get it. Back in neutral territory. Another long-range save there from Sweeney. He's a perfect three for three tonight so far. Thorpe had it, lost it, looking for a shot in the low slot. A good pad save there from Sweeney. That one goes wide. Simchick with a pair of great A chances in the low slot. Another shot goes wide. Bucknell starting to buzz. Zagrocki was trying to get it. Now Lacane will send it the length of the ice, but it will lose a little bit of speed with the friction, and it will the icing will be called off. Good thing for Widener is... Ogborn will knock that down with a high stick. With a high stick for Ogborn means that the twig has got to be in the stratosphere. <laughs> for sure. And th those are some great saves there from Ryan Sweeney. Able to just sh shut down some great chances there for Marco Simchik in the middle. Right in the low slot, all on his own. No one even was there to cover him. And Sweeney able to shut the door has been perfect so far, like you said, Trey. Ratner wins the draw, but it goes behind McNally. It's kept into the zone there by Afazilis. Fontaine was lost sight of the puck, and it comes back to Ogborn. He'll rim it along the high glass, back into the neutral zone. Bucknell trying to bring it back out. Widener just trying to find their legs here early on in this game. Have not recorded a shot on net just yet, but it's still a very early game as that one popped in and out, and Bucknell is offsides. Yeah, I think they're just trying to find their footing so far, like you said. And I, I think after the coming off of the heels of yesterday's game against Kutztown, being shut out 3 nothing, I think they're just trying to get back into a groove here at the start of the second semester. Uh, second game of the weekend, they'll have one more tomorrow. So a three-game weekend here for the Pride as it's just trying to get back under your legs and just try and really get going here at the start of the semester with playoffs on the horizon. Yeah, you've got Lacane who's made his return to the lineup as that one from Wines wasn't able to get put on net. Actually, it was going to be able to put on net. That one directly on net. Strickler held it for a second, tried to get rid of it, but it'll be called down for a save. And a pair of shots here for Widener so far, so they're officially on the shot clock. 2-4 the shot ratio right now with 12.53 to go in the first period. Lacane at the dot looking to get this Widener team going. It gets to Ogborn. Ogborn puts one. That one redirected by Wines, but it's not able to be redirected in the right direction. A big hit in the corner there as a member of the Pride is down. That was Bonsall who was shaken up on the hit. He's able to get back up to his skates. You know, you hearken back, um, we're at the AAU level tonight, but in the ACHA last night, scary situation between uh, NC State and UNC where Cade Cox took a scary hit in the boards, was down for a significant period of time, and fortunately he was able to regain uh, feeling in all of his extremities, so we wish a speedy recovery for him, and our thoughts and prayers tonight with the NC State community after just a freak accident, and. You know, at the end of the day, you know, this is a sport, but it's the players. These are students that come first. They don't call them student athletes for nothing, Corolla. 
Yeah, for sure. All, all of our thoughts and prayers with them right now. And like you said, a scary situation on that. And kind of like you said, a freak accident is the best way to describe that. And as this one gets lofted up and out into the stands right below us, had a couple of uh, times where we've seen the puck come close to us over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, that was uh, Ogborn giving us a little souvenir. As the as the kids, kids come uh, and get that sure one. Where the puck went, it went down in between the uh, little stanchion there. Almost, thankfully, it didn't go up into the broadcast booth. Had a scary situation, a close call last week with the Ryder game or the Ryder game against Penn State. Of course, the one Ryder game of the year I don't end well, up well, doing. Well, you're here for this one. It didn't quite <laughs> go up into our monitor. Thankfully, it's shielded by a couple of stanchions here, so that's unlikely knock on wood as Widener will ice that with 12.01 to go. Clock has got to get stopped here, and they'll finally stop it with 12.03 to go in the first period. 3-4, to four, your shot ratio, but still scoreless from Iceworks. But yeah, no netting here. Both a bless it's a blessing from the broadcaster's perspective and also a curse because you could get whacked with the vulcanized rubber. Hopefully that won't happen. Bucknell wins the draw, but is taken away there by Ogborn. Two on two, back the other way. Ogborn was trying to spring Zagraki for the breakaway goal, but he's pickpocketed there by Bucknell. Puck comes back into the neutral zone where Fontaine's with it. Excuse me, now Fontaine will clear it out. That was Kennedy who had it. Got the 87 and 97 confused a little bit there, especially with the both of them being on relatively same lines. The other way, Thorpe was trying to dance through a couple of Pride members. Now Zagraki takes a hit at the red line. Widener bench was a cross check. It's a big hit there from Lacane. Lacane showing his physical toughness early in this one as a hip check behind the net by Zagraki. Game's starting to take a physical turn here as Bonsall avoids a check from a Bucknell skater. Below us, Lacane will send it into the opposite corner where it's tracked that back there by Bucknell. Azealis had it, lost it, taken away by the Bison, kept in there by Gilbert as he takes an elbow. Now pops out of the zone and Bucknell with numbers if they hurry. Back the other direction, Bison in on Sweeney, but a good stick check there from Matthew Kennedy but it looks like he's gonna take a penalty. I'm so Kennedy, very surprised Kennedy's gonna get a penalty there. I thought that was gonna go against the number 18 of Noah Thorpe for that whack he took at Kennedy at the end of the play. Yeah, but I'm surprised there, because that, that was just a good defensive back check there from Kennedy. You know, he just playing his, def uh, his position, and you saw Kennedy was motioning, I got whacked after the play, you're not gonna call that. And I think there might actually be a penalty on Bonsall here as well for the hit behind over here in the in the corner on the left side. But well, I I, I don't know about that because well he's that, in, he ended up in the box as well, and I think the they were signaling cross check for Bonsall. Well, so. that was just a clean hit. If you want to give someone a cross check, give it for Lacane. Or I think it was a uh, Bonsall. In fact, who was hit right in front of the bench? He saw Mike Kennedy uh, motioning for a cross-checking penalty, but it'll be a long five-on-three penalty kill for the Pride and the fans hearing it tonight. Sweeney passes his first test of the penalty kill, and it's cleared by Widener. Exactly 1:48 to go in the five-on-three. Widener just trying to hold on. Bucknell looking for the early advantage. Sam Bird Leitner will dish it back for a Bucknell teammate. Skating west with it is Ratner. Ratner still with it. He'll dish it back over to Bird Leitner. Leitner was looking for it. Gets it back to Azelius. Azelius up into the near corner. Azelius back with it. Right in the center for Bird Leitner. He tries to put a shot on that, and that one goes off the iron. Man, that was a really good shot from in close. He was able to just walk in and rip that shot as that one blocked away by the defense. And a Wines. huge hit down there as well. Got that one up high, no call, we continue. Yeah, Wines was clearly hit up high and the Widener bench incensed by that. Under a minute to go in the five on three. Jake Rogers with it, puts one on Sweeney, he makes the pad save and the rebound kept in at the zone by Bucknell. 
And Zagraki will backhand that as McNally lost a hold of it with 40 seconds to go in the five on three. Widener looking for the momentum if they're able to kill this off. No whistle in the five on three just yet. Bucknell looking for one last opportunity. Here come the Bisons back the other way. Bert Leitner had it, lost it. It'll come back to Fontaine and he will bring it out of the zone and Zagraki looking for potentially a shorthanded goal but it's cleared out of there by Strickler. 13 seconds to go in the penalties. One last chance for Bucknell back the other direction. Losing a hold of it was Strug, and on Sweeney, that one saved, and he covers it up with four seconds to go in the five on three. It's been a very, very good kill so far here for the Pride. Doing an excellent job here with four seconds left to go on the clock. Have been excellent so far on the penalty kill. Two shots so far on this power play for Bucknell. Four seconds left in it. Widener will win the draw and it's a successful clean or a kill for the Pride. And a big hit right between the dots. And no penalty called on the play. Icing will stop it. And a huge green light hit there from Bonsall on a Bucknell skater. And oh boy. Already things getting pretty physical, as Olivia Newton-John would say. Man, Bonsall caught him in the train tracks on that hit, came right out of the box, went right at him, nearly put him in a full tailspin. And it looks like Fontaine was off the ice, might have had an equipment malfunction. He's back out on the bench. Yeah, I think he went to go get a new stick from the locker room. And we saw the broken twig right between the circles. So now Widener looking to respond in kind with a couple of shots of their own. Lacane will shoot it right in the bread basket. Dangerous situation there, but Bucknell able to take it away. Here comes Bucknell the other direction. Scrug lifted off his stick and now a tussle there. And now we're not gonna get a penalty as We are Henry actually gonna Luft, get one here. Henry Luft couldn't tell he was sick there, but now it will be a penalty against Bucknell. And it looks like it is going to be Henry Luft going to the box for an interference. That was that was pretty clear interference there. Got tied up there, down tell there. It was with if Gilbert. It was Ogborn or Zagraki who got hit. It there. was Gilbert actually was who Gilbert. was down there. And, and that, that was a delayed penalty. Yeah, that took a while to get called and I wonder if they're gonna maybe say that this, or if the bench for Widener is gonna argue that this should be more than two. I mean, that was a high hit. Kennedy will talk to the referee, but as it stands, it'll be Henry Luft in the box for a pair of minutes, and Widener will look to get on the board with their own power play. So far, it's Will Strickler who has saved all five shots. Currently what the shutout bid so far, but it's still early in the game. 7.49 to go in the first period. A long way to go and a short time to get there as a wise man once said. And it looks like it's going to stick to being a two minute minor against Luft. And it's gonna be a roughing call on Luft there. They, they ended up signaling that a roughing as a Widener gets their first power play opportunity of the game. Lacane had it, he gets it back to Kennedy. Kennedy will send it up ice for Lacane right in front, but a good save there by Strickler, his first of the power play. Sweeney will dish it off, checking back is Ogborn. Ogborn with McNally hounding him from behind and comes back up to Kennedy. Matthew Kennedy skating in the opposite direction, fakes a slap shot, decides to take it behind Strickler's office, tried to pull one right in front, but Lacane couldn't get a shot off. Now Zagraki had it, lost it. Here comes Bucknell looking for the shorthand opportunity. In the other direction, they've got numbers. Two on one, McNally looking for it and shooting it way wide was Bird Leitner. Had a great opportunity, but he shot it about a mile over Sweeney's mask. Yeah, you gotta try and put those on that. That's a tough one to miss there, but you have to try and get back on the back check too if you're Widener on the power play. Try and get back and try and cut away those shorthanded chances. 
Ogborn with it, 54 seconds to go in the man advantage. Kennedy is able, excuse me, that's Bonsall who's able to keep it in the zone. He'll dish it across ice, fighting for it. And now Gilbert is gonna have him. Now Gilbert is going to go to the box for a hold. So we'll be holding against Gilbert. We'll play four on four for 42 seconds as Noah Gilbert clearly held Noah Thorpe there. Noah on Noah crime. And Gilbert to the sin bin for a pair of minutes. So like I said, it'll be abbreviated four on four for the next 42 seconds. And then a short power play for Bucknell, who is 0 for 1 tonight. Yeah, and if you're Gilbert there, you just can't take those penalties, especially in the offensive zone. The guy falls on the puck. You should just back up, let him try and at least get back up to his skates, then go back in with your stick to try and knock it away, to try and eliminate taking those kinds of penalties. They're especially on the power play. You want to try and take as many chances as you can on the man advantage and try and open up the scoring here in this one. And now back the other way. Icing is going to be waved off. I'm not... Again, I'm not too, too familiar with the specific AAU hockey rules if you're able to ice it on a four on four. But nonetheless, back the other direction is of Vesalis. Of Zelius, excuse me. Widener will send it the length of the ice. 10 seconds to go in the four on four and it will be icing this time so you are not legally able to do that. So they- Rocky couldn't beat out the icing. They actually waved that icing off before. Uh, they said they they said they tipped it, which I don't know. Maybe the referees felt like it got just enough of it, just enough of a stick. But either way, it was waved off. So, hence the no icing call. But now we get finally that one on Widener. So it'll be a minute 18 of abbreviated power play time for Bucknell in 10 seconds. Ogborn trying to rim it around, and here comes Widener. No, Bonsall lost it in his skates, but he got it back. One man opportunity now, Bonzo with an incredible move, trying to set up Zagrocki, but a great block there from Bucknell, and they've got numbers the other direction. On the power play, here come the Bison, saved by Sweeney, rebound collected by Zagrocki, trying to get a shorthand opportunity, but elected to keep it to himself and milk this clock a little bit. Zagrocki will send it back for Kennedy behind him. 55 seconds to go in the man advantage as Kennedy will send it the length of the ice. Strickler will set it up for Bird Leitner. Sam Bird Leitner. That one offside against Widener. Now a couple of Bison collide at the blue line. A little miscommunication there from Bucknell, but it's backlifted into the Widener territory where Kennedy will send it the length of the ice. No, it's kept in there by Bird Leitner. Rebound. Gobbled up there, but a good save by Sweeney. 10 saves so far for Ryan Sweeney here tonight. Is that one cleared out there? That was Kennedy, I believe, who cleared it out. Bucknell looking for the opportunity. That one from long range, and they score. It's Bird Leitner with a laser from the top of the circle, and it's a power play goal for Bucknell as they lead 1-0. Yeah, that was a great shot there, walking right into the slot, and Bird Leitner just let that one rip and is able to beat Sweeney there. On the power play, 12th shot of the evening here for Bucknell. Really trying to take control of this game here and opening the scoring here on the power play. So Bird Leitner on the goal on Bucknell's 12th shot of the evening and it's a quick one nothing deficit for this Widener team. Back the other way, two on three in favor of Ry or Widener, or Bucknell. Finally got the school right on the third try. Menta now digging for it. Skaters from both teams digging for it, and now it's taken away there by Scrug, but it's cleared out by Ogborn. No, it's kept in at the zone again. Good blue line control here from this Bucknell squad early in this game. Now a loose puck right in front. Ogborn doesn't know where it is, and that one will bounce out of the zone into the neutral ice where it's cleared out there. Ogborn skating west with it. Try to stick it up for Menta. Trying to dump it and chase as Ogborn back with it. Now Menta took it away from Ogborn. Same team here, guys. This isn't Pee-wee. <laughs> Thorpe now with it. Back the other way is Bucknell. Looking for Ratner. 
Ratner lost it, and it's covered by Sweeney. And we'll get a stoppage with 3.36 to go in the first period. Bucknell with an early lead off of a Sam Bird Leitner power play goal. Yeah, it's been a good game so far here for, for Bucknell, really controlling the play. And like you said at the blue line, some very good puck control at the blue line, able to keep pucks in at the blue line. And that's just good and smart defensive work from your D-men for, for the Bisons, able to really control the zone, able to keep the pressure in the blue line as that one saved by Sweeney again, and he's able to jump on top of it. He's able to cover the rebound, though, as Thorpe, who had a good chance mid-range. Again, you're going back to keeping at the blue line. It was Bird Leitner who kept in the own rebound, or the kept in the, uh, the clear there, and teed it up for himself to get that goal off. A scramble for the puck at the point, or at the dot, excuse me. It comes back over to Luft. Luft trying to look for options right in front. A good pad save there from Sweeney. Back the other way is Zagrocki trying to beat out the icing. He's wheeling, he's wheeling, and it'll be waved off. A good rush there from Zagrocki. And look like he hooked a Bucknell skater. But you just can't allow that to happen as... It, it just it just hurts your chances here with 2.46 left to go here in the first period. You just can't allow stuff like that to get into your head and take those penalties where they're trying to goat you into one. So it'll be another penalty kill for Weiner. They're three for four on the evening so far. Good save there from Sweeney, but the rebound taken away by McNally. That one will be sent the length of the ice. Now McCain trying to track back after it. Strickler will set it up, will decide to send it behind his office for Sam Bird Leitner. SBL will take it at the blue line. Bird Leitner back with it. Bird Leitner puts the slap shot on, but it's blocked there by Ogborn. Will go up into the rafters with 127 to go in the penalty. I'll tell you, Bird Leitner has been all over the ice in the late stages of this period. For a defenseman, he reminds me a lot of Eddie Coyne, how he's able to really be the quarterback on this power play, and he's got the only way goal in the game so far, Carollo. Yeah, he certainly does. He's been very, very effective so far here in this game, here for this Bison squad. And comparing him to Eddie Coyne is a pretty good comparable as that one just comes out of the zone. Bucknell will have to track it back down in their own end with 118 left to go here on the power play. Two minutes left to go here in the first period. Luff skate in the other direction. A buck 55 to go in the first, a buck seven to go in the penalty. Zagrocki waiting to get out of the box. Bucknell looking to extend the lead. Ogborn fighting for it. He's trying to dig at it. He takes a hit to the head. And Ogborn, excuse me, that will be, uh, yeah, that is Ogborn who will chain reaction into Luft, it, was, it looked like. Both benches were looking for a call, but since both players got into one another, refs will let them play. 37 seconds to go in the Zagraki roughing minor. Bucknell looking for another opportunity to extend this lead. Other way, it's Thorpe. Thorpe is taken down. Shot on Sweeney, and he is able to make the transition save and shoved into his own net, and we're going to get a Donnybrook right in front of the cage. Yep. Sweeney had had that puck covered for about a second, was pushed back in, and fans calling for Aiden Donovan, who was at the doorstep. He was the one who pushed Sweeney into his own net, and we'll see what the refs decide to dish out here penalty-wise, but... Man, oh man, 20 minutes down and still 40 minutes to go. This is shaping up to be a physical tilt, Corolla. Oh yeah, for sure. It's facing, it, it, it is shaping up to be a extremely physical game and a very chippy game as I don't think we're gonna get any penalties here based on the way people are skating back to their benches. And it does seem like at least the number 20 of Aiden Donovan is gonna end up in the cage and Ogborn. Ogborn as well. Yeah, Ogborn's going to go too. So I'm thinking maybe coincidentals here as the referees discuss this over. Here with 111 left to go here in this first period. Shot 7 to 16. So Buck now doubling the shot count on Widener. Sweeney, 15 for 16.
and they're gonna talk it over here. Both captains talking it over with the stripes. And it seems like it's gonna be coincidentals here on these two team on these two players. I think they're both gonna get roughing penalties based on what the referees were signaling. It will be coincidentals as they take the penalties off the scoreboard. So Donovan and Ogborn in the box, and that's more of a curse than a blessing for Widener because yeah, you get a man in the box for Bucknell, but also you got Ogborn, who's one of their best penalty killers. You gotta go 25 seconds without Connor Ogborn on that blue line as a defenseman. But Widener is up for the draw. And off the draw, it's one there. Still five on four here, approaching the last minute to play in the first period. 15 seconds to go in the penalty. Now Lacane looking for options right in front. Couldn't get Bonzo. Bonzo looking for Lacane, and he scores! First game back, and he's on the board here. Short-handed goal for Charlie Lacane, and it's 1-1 with 53 seconds to go. Man, what a way to come back here at home for Charlie Lacane. Like you said, and like we said earlier, picking up right where he left off can always seem to find the back of the net in the dying seconds here against these Bucknell Bison. Going back to the DBCHC tournament last year, scored with, I think it was around 37 seconds left to go in that game, and gets it done here with 53.5 left to go here in this first period. And it is a whole new ball game. It is with 47 seconds to go. One second left as here comes Scrugg right on Sweeney. And a good save there, and he's able to gobble up the rebound. Strug was streaking there like a missile. And Sweeney is able to make the save. But it'll be Lacane on the goal and Bonsall with the assist. Those two playing hot potato with the vulcanized rubber. And Bonsall wasn't able to get it, but he pops it behind the cage. And on a silver pat platter for Lacane at the welcome mat for his first of the campaign in his first game back. So like you said, it's a whole new ball game. And Widener completely forgot that they're on, not on a penalty kill anymore, so Conway will jump on the ice and now it's finally five on five. Yeah, I think the coincidentals might have had some people confused there over on the Widener benches. Finally, they got the fifth skater on there as we're down to the final 30 seconds or so of this opening frame. A 1-1 game so far as this one stays in the zone. Conway with it, trying to get it to Wines, but he's hit there in the shin. Bonsall, Bonsall is hit high, and the Widener bench is incensed, and they are going to get a penalty, and Bonsall is down. He's able to get back to his skates, and a dangerous hit there from Jake Rogers, and you got to imagine this this might be a five-minute major. That was a clear hit to the head. Yeah, it was a hit to the head, and, and it, it was a late hit as well. He came in and was the second man in to lay the body on, on the captain, Bonsall, there. So we'll have to see if this is going to end up more than just two minutes as Rogers will go to the box, and it's going to be a hit to the head penalty. And a misconduct and call a here. And a misconduct, so it'll be a major. Rogers is incensed. He's arguing with it, but that's pretty cut and dry. We'll go on the other end of our broadcast booth and take a look on the monitor. Yeah. <laughs> and he's still arguing with the referees over there, screaming at them as he skates to the locker room. Incensed over that hit. And he has been tossed from this game. And looking back on it, he came in late and just that was threw a clear, clear elbow right clear up into the head. Elbow to the head, RKOing Damon Bonsall. And th this is sending a this is sending a message to both teams here. As it looks like Wines will go to the box as well. I think we may be getting a penalty here on Wines for a unsportsmanlike as Rogers was going over to the locker room door, or over to the to the door to the rink. I think Wines was chirping him a bit, and the referee's not happy with that as he will go and sit. So we'll have a three-minute power play here for the Pride after we play two minutes of four-on-four. Four. 
17 seconds left to go here in this period. So we'll play four on four for 16 seconds to end out the frame. And then we'll continue with four on four to start the second. And then after the two minutes expire, after the rest of the time expires here, four on four, a three minute power play for the Pride. If anybody else was confused on how things work, you're not alone, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that, that's just <laughs> AAU hockey. That's why we love it here. And penalties galore. As, as Mike Emmerich says in the old NHL games, we're running out of ink on this penalty sheet already. And it's not even the end of the first period. So four on four for the next 15 seconds. Bucknell looking for one last opportunity. Skating back the other direction is Luft. That was Thorpe on it, and he lost it. Thorpe is able to get it back, but an easy flash of the leather there by Sweeney. He's able to glove it down with six to go. Yeah, that was some good work there by Sweeney with the glove, able to, ju to just see that one, glove it down easily with the final five seconds left to go here. As five, I think six. there might have might have been a six man on there for the for the pride. Off the draw, Lacane wins it, trying to clear it out of the zone. Fontaine would have had a good opportunity the other end if he hurried. He'll take a late hit. 20 minutes down, 40 minutes to go, and probably even more penalty minutes to come after that. But Charlie Lacane makes this a one. One game after Sam Bird Leitner scored for the Bison on the power play midway through the period. And it's tied at one here going into the first intermission. A chippy period, an exciting period, and a period with a red light going on at either end. But we'll step aside here for just a couple of minutes. You're watching Widener Pride AU Hockey live here on Breakout Sports Broadcasting.
And we're back for coverage of the second period of tonight's AAU hockey matchup between Bucknell and Widener. Score knotted up at one. We've got penalty minutes on the board, penalty minutes on the ice, and a little bit of a Donnybrook there between the two teams going back to the locker rooms. Yeah, we almost had a scrum in between the in between the two locker rooms. Maybe not great planning to have the team's locker rooms literally right next to each other as they both went off to the benches and to their locker rooms there when they went off the ice. I'm not sure who it was. We couldn't see from up here who was getting into it with the team with the other teams, but all we know is all the coaches from both teams sprinted across to try and get to to, to the teams to break them up. It didn't seem like there was actually any pushing or shoving or, thro or punches thrown, just a lot of yelling and chirping going on. As for hockey, is normally is, but nonetheless, 20 minutes down, 40 minutes to go as we enter our number two of this contest. That was a marathon of a first period, and we've got two more on deck. Goals for both teams. First one coming from Bucknell on the power play from Sam Berleitner, and then it's Charlie LeCain, first game back for the Pride, and he's already got a point on the board. A goal on the board, rather, with assist there from Damon Bonzal. So one down, two to go. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. Grab the popcorn, get the coffee. It's gonna be a late one. After a late start here tonight, Technically, if you go back to our other games where they had 9.30 starts, you could say that this is a little bit of an early start. Well, what's even crazier is they tried to push this game up a couple minutes too. Tried to start five or so minutes early as the rink had actually scheduled the game for 8.30, but no one had actually realized that un until everyone got here. A bit of a miscommunication between the rink and, and both the teams. But either way, we started a couple minutes earlier, at least a, at least a little bit earlier, but that first period, Felt like it took like an hour, so. It did take about just an hour as for 10.08 is the time locally here in Aston, Pennsylvania. Referee is discussing some stuff with one another and doesn't look like there's gonna be any, any penalties from that little mini fight there between the locker rooms. Everybody's still on the bench it seems. So as the Stripes talk things over, once again, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in to tonight's coverage of Widener AAU Hockey. We'll be back here, most likely, next week for Senior Night. Yes, on as the 17th, we will be back for Senior Night as it seems like we'll set up and do this draw again as players go to the boxes. Correct player is in the correct boxes. Four on four for the next minute 42. And then Widener will have a or three minute power play uninter uninterrupted. Trying to take the lead in this game for the first time tonight. But right now it's Bucknell. Right now it is Bucknell with it. And it's Noah Thorpe with the puck. With the puck. Thorpe behind Sweeney looking for someone in front. Is taken away there by Bonzal. Damon Bonzal as Lacane will upend a member of the Bison. Strick, uh, Strickler will take that away. And it's back, Bucknell skating the other direction. Two on two between the Pride and the Bison. Long range shot on Sweeney. He'll take it off. One minute to go in the four on four. Puck to flex off of Bonsall, that one will go wide. And they're gonna call an icing there. Bonsall clearly tipped that I believe that was past the red line. I, I think he might have just missed it, but just barely. I think it went just over his stick there, but just by a hair, hence I don't know, the icing. That, that clearly, re from my vantage it redirected point, off the boards right in front of us here. Kind of hard to, kind of hard to see, but well, he, he could right, have gotten a touch on. He was right in the middle there. It, um, it sounded like some carbon fiber rather than the metal boards, but nonetheless, it's two on two the other direction. Here comes. Kennedy with it. Matthew Kennedy will send it through the welcome map, but not through the front door. 39 seconds to go in the four on four. Bucknell back with it. Ratner loses the puck. He's able to regain it. Fontaine will stick it along the ice. 24 seconds to go in the even strength. Zagraki fighting for it. Puck will come loose. Zagraki will rim it along. The half wall. No, it's 
stopped there by Burn Lightner. That's about the third time today Burn Lightner has made a good save there to regain possession. Back at center ice, tracking back for it was Michael Castro. And that one sent to sign where it's Catram Bone able to take it away. 2.55 of power play time for the Pride as Sweeney will set that up for Ogborn and he's going back the other way. Wines now with it. Jimmy Wines looking for it. Decides to angle it off the half wall where it comes to Fontaine. Fontaine will get it up to Kennedy. 2.33 to go in the five minute major. Back to Zagraki at the point. He puts one through traffic and it can't get there. Cleared the end of the ice by Bucknell and Widener will have to start in their own zone. Still two, 20 minute, two minutes and 20 seconds of uninterrupted power play time. Puck too far for Wines to corral it. And Kennedy will set things back up in the opposite zone. We'll get it to Zagraki. He'll send it through the low slot. Nobody home. Wines now tracking back for it. But it's Avzelius who took it away. Bonzal, who drew the five minute major penalty, was on the ice, gets it to Lacane. Now Lacane was trying to get Bonzal the doorstep, but he couldn't get it. Now back the other way. Here comes Bucknell, two on one, shorthanded if they hurry. Out the other way, Sweeney with a good save and the rebound is brought off, but it's gonna be a slashing call against Widener. Yeah, on that back check, Ogborn, I think might have got caught there. It might actually be it's going to be Wines who will go to the sin bin. It's going to be Kennedy, actually. No, it's going to be Kennedy, go to the actually. There. He was the one on the back check. The lone man back there on that shorthanded chance there for Bucknell was tracking back, and the 18 there of Thorpe was able to just get around him, and Kennedy gave him a whack, hence the slashing call. So now we're back to four on four here. Right back to where we started. Four on four for the next minute 30. And it'll be about 22 seconds of power play time for Bucknell. Back the other way, it comes up to Strug and he'll get it up to McNally. Strug with the glove pass and Ogborn will send it down the length of the ice. Taken away there by Burleitner. Already has a goal here tonight, looking for the second one. This time on the four on four. He'll put one on Sweeney. That one redirects to the half wall where it's corralled there by Ogborn. Now sending it back. Conway had the stick slash out of his hands, but no call is made, and Bucknell will retreat. Yeah, I'm surprised there was no call there as that stick went flying there out of Conway's hands. I'm, I'm very surprised there wasn't at least some sort of hooking call on that play as Bucknell comes the other direction. Now McNally sends one to the left side of Sweeney, that one in the skates of, of uh, Bonsall, excuse me. 56 seconds to go in the four on four at the blue line where the puck will take a ride behind the red line. Stick, it will skip over Strug's stick. And back the other direction is Conway. Conway tracking back for it. Bucknell still with it, stick aside there over to Castro. That one sent the length of the ice and it'll be icing against the Bison here. Ratner was unable to beat out the icing so with 29, excuse me, eight seconds to go in the four on four. It'll be a face off in the Bucknell zone with 15.25 to go in the middle frame. Still tied at one between Widener and Bucknell. Yeah, shots 20 to nine right now in favor of Bucknell. They've dominated in the shot category. Looking to get their lead back here with the four on four just about over here. So it'll be 22 seconds of power play time for Bucknell as Wines looking for a shorthand opportunity. That one waffle boarded away by Strickler and Bucknell looking to set up a charge. Bonzal was trying to get it to Wines. He'll milk a little bit of clock. Graney behind his own net. He'll send it up, taken away there as Bonzal is able to dump it out where Donovan will track back for it. Penalty time is up, back to five on five for the first time in this period. And Kennedy will backhand it, but it's kept in at the zone and Bucknell is just barely gonna be offsides there. But like you said, shots 10 to 20, Bucknell again, 
doubling the shot count than wider, but it's still a 1-1 game. Sweeney has really stood on his head in the crease here so far tonight. Yeah, he's certainly played really well so far in this game. I mean, like I said earlier in the first, coming into it, a 347 GAA, 898 save percentage, 3-3 three and three record so far this season. Has played pretty good so far this year and is doing so once again here this evening. Conway will stick it in. He's interfered there a little bit there by Bird Leitner. And the Bison back the other direction. Here comes Simchik with it. Simchik, big hip check there from Gilbert at the near wall. He'll come back to the point. Shot through traffic. That one hits Sweeney in the mask. He doesn't know where it is, and the net is going to come off of its moorings. That was Kennedy who went crashing into the net, and it'll come off. But a good hip check there from Gilbert right behind Sweeney's cage. Yeah, and, and going back to that shot from the point, Sweeney was able to get the pad across and kick that away into the corner as Kennedy went flying into the net. Like you said, a great save there from Sweeney. Did a really good job to somehow find that through traffic in front of him and was able to make that stop. Widener wins the draw, but it's kept in there by Bird Leitner again. Sweeney will cover that up for another stoppage. And we're gonna get a tripping call against Bird Leitner here. I didn't see a trip, did you? I did not, it must have been just out of play. Or at the blue line it might have actually been there as I think Fontaine was at the blue line who might have been tripped up. And now the Bucknell coach giving it to the referees here. So it'll be a power play for the Pride. Bird Leitner to the box for a trip and it's two minutes of power play time. We'll see if Widener is able to stay out of the box and keep this at a full power play. It starts with a win, Ogborn at the point. He'll rim it around behind the half wall where it comes to Wines. Wines back to Lacane. He'll slow it down enough for Ogborn to corral it. Back to Lacane. Lacane at the circle. We'll get it up to Wines. Wines looking for someone, and there was Bonsall in the low slot, but he couldn't get a clean shot off. Ogborn still with it. Wines back to Lacane at the point. Lacane's and Wines play catch with it. Wines still with the vulcanized rubble. He'll get it back to Bonsall with 1.28 to go in the man advantage. Ogborn at the center point. Gets it back to Lacane. Lacane looking for the backdoor pass for Bonzal, but he's not able to get a shot off. Simchek will hit Fontaine. Ogborn will send a weak shot and back the other direction comes Bucknell, trying to milk a little bit of clock and it comes to Simchik. Simchik looking for the shorthand opportunity, but Ogborn with a great stick there. That one deflected. Bonzal was looking for the breakaway opportunity on the power play with one minute to go in the tripping minor. Bucknell back the other direction. And on Sweeney, that one takes a hard shot into the half wall where it comes back Sweeney with it, cleared out there by Ogborn. It's a great chance there from Avzelius. As that one will stay in the zone, a good keep there from Catron Bone, but Avzelius will stick it out and finally gets sent down the length of the ice. And this has been a great kill so far here from Bucknell. Really getting a lot of chances here on the shorthanded, which usually we've seen Widener be very good on the power play, at least usually protecting their own zone. I mean, Bucknell had a couple chances earlier in the first period on the shorthand, but it was more or less just odd man rushes on the broken passes out of the zone, not full on controlling possession, as this one's gonna be called down for offside here with 11 seconds left on the power play. Yeah, and this Pride team, they're still adjusting to a new system. You know, Catalo, who's usually in that 1C slot, he's over in Westchester now, so you got Lacane coming back, so you gotta adjust from what you've had from the first 18 games, or the 17 games of the season into a new system, especially on that PP1. But 11 seconds to go in the Bird Leitner tripping minor. And Bucknell will try and clear this out, looking for the shorthanded opportunity. Thorpe with it, he puts it right into Sweeney's bread basket, and he is able to gobble it up again. A good save there from Sweeney, but his team not helping him up in front of him either. Still 10 to 23, the shots. And 
the Bison just peppering the net of Ryan Sweeney, but he has been able to do his part. Now his team has got to help him out on the other end. Menta trying to beat out the icing, and he's he clearly had a half step on them at the hash marks. But the refs will call it icing against the Pride with 12.02 to go, and taking a look at it, you know, Menta down at the bottom, and uh, that was a it's little close. close. It's close, and power play now over back to five on five, and what's even crazier about that penalty kill there for Bucknell allowed zero shots for Widener on the man advantage. Bucknell offside, so face off outside the zone. Two goals apiece for either team, split up at one. And funny enough, both of them, or neither of them rather, came at even strength. It was a power play goal for Bucknell and a shorthanded goal for Widener back in the first period, which seems like eons ago at this point. And entering the half or nearing the halfway point through this game as that one will kerrang into the board into the stands. And that one got flipped up and out, came pretty high as it's thrown back in. It ended up hitting one of the Bucknell players as it was tossed back in. Yeah, I think uh that hit Ratner in the leg there. So it'll be McNally and Menta on the draw. McNally and McCain, or Lacane, excuse me. And it's won there by Ratner, but he'll be offside, so we'll rack him up and send him off again. They're in the same spot. We'll see if we can finally get a good face off there for the third time in a row. 11.50 to go in at the middle period. Still tied at one. Charlie Lacane, the only goal scorer for the Pride in this one. And Sam Byrne Leitner, the only score, goal scorer for the Bison. Graney was tracking back for it. And that one sent the length of the ice, but the refs are gonna say that it was tipped. And it comes back to Gilbert. Gilbert will stick it up, was looking for Wines, but he was a little late. Now Wines trying to take it away, but it's taken away there by Jackson Graney. Kennedy will send it. Puck still in neutral territory. Lacane will try to stick it away. And here comes McNally with it. McNally had Herman in the low slot as that was shot. Not nearly enough mustard there from Graney. But it's another stoppage here. As Sweeney opted to cover that bouncing puck going into his crease. As he stopped 23 of 24 so far, has had a very good evening. Here with 11.09 left to go here in the middle frame. Face off one by the Pride. Back the other way. Poole stick it up the end of the ice. Not far enough for an icing as Mento was trying to take it away from Donovan, but a good back check there. In the other direction, that one on Sweeney. He'll stop it again, so just crawling to the midway point through this period. But 24 shots on net for Bucknell, but still have only been able to solve Sweeney once. But still plenty of time in this one, only at the halfway point as more and more fans start to pop out here for a late one tonight, but an exciting one. Off the draw, kept into the point by Donovan. That one sticks off of Fontaine. Cat Trambone trying to bring it into neutral territory, and it's Wines who will finally poke it out. Wines was held, no call. Now two on one of Wines and Canarella. Wines puts one on, but it's sticked aside there by Strickler. He is elbowed into the boards, and it's taken back by Bucknell. Three on two if they hurry. Thorpe couldn't control it, now he's got it back. Thorpe will dish it back for uh, Simchek. Nothing on it though. Back over to Avilius, Avzelius. Luff was trying to get it, nowhere to go for him. Fontaine finally tries to backhand it, he'll get it back to Zagraki. Even numbers the other direction, two on two, Zagraki will just put it on net, and a good second baseman grab there 
by Will Strickler to stop play just past the halfway point. Cue the Bon Jovi, ladies and gentlemen. We are just past halfway there, and we're living on a prayer here. <laughs> it finally hit the halfway mark of the game here this evening. It's taken us a while to get here. We started it. Just want to point that out. It's taken a while for us to get here. That first period, like we said earlier in the in the frame here, it took almost a full hour to play, and we were moving pretty steadily along here at the start of the second period. I was thinking, oh, maybe we'll play this period a little bit quicker. We got through six minutes or so in a in a pretty quick time of play. As we'll get another whistle here, as that one goes down for an icing here on the Pride. So now with 9.41 to go, 11.24, the shot ratio in favor of Bucknell. But again, still plenty of time here for things to change between these two squads. Conway wins the face off, he'll get it back to Kennedy, but it's kept back in there by Erbach. Back the other way in neutral territory. Menta can't stick it. Good shoulder check there from a Bucknell skater where Conway finally has it. Now he lost it. Neither skater knows where it is, but it comes back out behind. I believe that's uh, Latornis who tried to stick it out of the zone. Gilbert will keep it in. Here, here comes Graney back the other direction. Graney will put one on Sweeney. He'll cover it up. And yet another stoppage here with 8.59 to go. We got a, we got a, a minute there, about a minute and a half <laughs> of playing time. So multiply that by another nine minutes and then 20 after that we'll finally get this game over at a reasonable time. But nonetheless, it's, it has not been a snooze fest by any stretch of the imagination. It's been a very old school physical AAU classic tilt. And coming down to the wire here on the score sheet. Ogborn will track back for the loose biscuit. He'll get it up to Bonsall, who was hit there on the green light. That was a huge hit there from Aiden Donovan. And another big hit there on Bonsall. He has been ragdolled all night as he will knock down McNally. No penalty on the play as the game takes another physical turn. Zagrocki will finish his check as the puck goes back into Widener territory. Yeah, and the coach there from Bucknell not happy with no call there on that hit by Bonsall as he gets knocked down. The bench for Widener now looking one as, like you said, game taking a physical turn once again. That a first hit there on Bonsall was perfectly clean, by the way. A completely clean hit caught him in the tracks and took him down as Zagrocki and Ethan Strug got into it a little bit as Zagrocki now able to keep it in the zone. He's fighting with Ratner there for a second. Zagrocki still trying to fight as a reverse check there from Donovan. He has been laying the lumber to this entire Widener team. He's had Bonzal's number all night long as Lacane will head down to the ice or comes back to Strug. Strug. Lose it from Catram Boners are still with it right in front and a great save there by Strickler. And now we're gonna get some extracurriculars there. Lacane gives a tap and he's gonna go to the box. And I think we're gonna get a couple penalties here to multiple players. And so it'll be an interference call. So Lacane's gonna go to the box. And, and it's going to be Luff going to the box. No, it's not gonna be Luff. It's I think it'll be a power play here. It seems like for uh, it seems like it's going to be a power play here for, for Bucknell. For Bucknell, that was that that was not interference. I don't know what that was. I think they're calling that a slash there on well, they, on Lacane for that arms, for that so whack. I guess they got the wrong call, but nonetheless, it's another power play for Bucknell, who's one for five on the man advantage so far in this one. Huge opportunity for the Bison to get the scoring back as that one is sent wide. That was Evzelius who sent that wide to Sweeney. Back at the point, shot through traffic, wouldn't go. The rebound was fanned on and it comes back over to Luft. That one as Zagrocki is hooked there by Bird Leitner. 
Pum puck comes back to Simchik. Back at the point, Bird Leitner with it, down Broadway, looking for somebody, has Zelius looking for the rebound, he got two shots on goal, Sweeney stopped both of them. Puck will come out, Strickler will set it up for SBL. And Bird Leitner gets hit there after the play by Zagraki. Fans letting them hear it here tonight, but back the way, it's Thorpe with it. He gets hit from behind by Zagraki. And Weiner now is starting to put the physicality in this. <laughs> Tell you, this has been a great old time hockey physical game here. But we're, we're about five hits away from having a full, full on line brawl. As Fontaine gets hit, <laughs> he'll give another shove to Luff there. Meanwhile, 37 seconds to go in the penalty. Two on two, the other direction. Thorpe was looking to do the windmill deke. He couldn't get it. And Bonsall can't quite clear it. Avzelius will keep it in the zone. It's finally cleared out by Bonsall, but he can't get it back on the other end of the ice. 15 seconds to go. One last opportunity for the Bison. Simchik looking for it. He'll get it up to Luft. Luft still with this puck, but he's not. Uh, he loses control of it. Three, two, one, another successful clear for Widener. And here comes Simchik back or back the other way was Lacane, excuse me, trying to get the jailbreak goal, but couldn't get it. Yeah, that was a great job by Lacane there to jump right back and try and go on the attack as coming out to play that was Strickler. As this one deflected into the zone by Wines. Wines almost high stick, but uh, almost high sticked it but it was deemed legal. McNally unable to get that, is taken in the back by Ogborn. Ogborn trying to take it, he's got a cannon, he sends that wide, a good blocker there from Strickler in fact, for Widener's 12th shot of the contest. 4.53 to go, Strickler will send that aside, another shot for Widener. Ogborn racing for the puck, he'll dance out of a hit and he'll keep it going. Menta looking for somebody on the low slot, that was Poole who had a great chance there. Yeah, was Man. looking for that backdoor pass there. Looking for the tip in as Bucknell able to skate away with it now. Here comes Luff, the other direction. Luff will send it in, excuse me, that was Donovan who is sending that west side. And it's Catrambone now with it for the pride. Was trying to spring Poole, but he couldn't get it. 4.18 to go in the second period. And that one will be airmailed into the rafters. With 4.15 to go, still deadlocked at one between these two teams. Yeah, it's been a good one so far. If you're just joining us, thank you for doing so. Here on Breakout Sports Broadcasting, the Widener Pride versus the Bucknell Bison, a one-to-one -one game so far. My name's Carl Pascal, joined alongside by Trey Wright. Shots 28 to 12 so far in this one in favor of Bucknell as that one goes off the side of the cage. Thought the net was uh, knocked off there for a second, but it's not. We play on. Strug will send it up ice, but it's brought back in there and controlled by Ratner. Rimmed along the half wall to Bird Leitner. A big hit opportunity from Fontaine. Back the other direction. A cannon of a shot from Bonzal. Looking to hit the snipe. And 3.47 to go. Here is a great opportunity for Widener, but they can't quite get it on net. Fontaine to Bonzal. He'll stick it in. And Widener. Kennedy's down on the other end of the ice here. I think he might have gotten a stick into the midsection. Yeah, you can, can hear some groans of pain here. And the trainer's going to come out and look at him here. Sweeney now looking at Kennedy. In a bad situation there. He's still down on the ice. Fortunately, he's able to be moving, so that's a good sign. Again, referencing last night's game between UNC and UN, or NC State. The scary Cade Cox incident. And this, this isn't the first time Kennedy has been down on the ice this season. So is Kennedy still down here? He's leaned on to his back. 3.36 to go.
And again, just an, a scary situation here for Widener. Matthew Kennedy still on the ice. He is not able to been get up and just praying that he's okay again. Like we were mentioning, at, at the end of the day, it's still, there's still student athletes. There's, there's students first. You know, again, th these are just kids. These are college kids just playing the sport we all live and breathe. And, you know, when stuff happens like this, it's just it's, it's an unfortunate and scary situation. Kennedy finally being sat back up. We'll see if he's able to get to his skates. He's on all fours right now, and he's able to stand back up. So good sign there from Matthew Kennedy able to get back to his skates and he'll skate back to the bench so I think he just got the wind knocked out of him but another scary situation there but we'll see what the refs call here they were looking they were uh, discussing it if there was a hit behind the play and I was just going back to, to look at that and Kennedy actually got cross-checked in the chest oh. on that on that way back Taking a look at the monitor here. Oh, and that was a high cross check. So, so totally surprised we missed that. And the refs missed it too, so no call on that. And Kennedy will go to the locker room for the remainder of this period. Hopefully see him come back, but still 3.29 to go in the second period. Zagrocki with it, has Bonzo right down Broadway. A good save there from Strickler, keeping this game tied. Gilbert will take that away. Waffle boarded there by Strickler. And here comes Bucknell the other direction. Lacane sticked it up, and that's going to be offsides as Bonsall was off by about half of a skate blade. And another faceoff with 3.11 to go in the second period. Another extended period. Not nearly as long as the first one was, knock on wood. But nonetheless, still an exciting one. And Unfortunately, Matthew Kennedy go in the locker room. Again, we, we've seen a lot of injuries this season on the broadcast. You harken back to the Alvernia game. Um, I think it was Logan Book for Alvernia who broke his leg in a matchup. And now two on one the other direction. Here comes Lacane looking for a second. Try to have Zagrocki on the two on one, but he was tied up. Now Zagrocki loses his twig. Thorpe trying to dance around the referee. And, and this game's getting physical now, getting really chippy between these two teams. The refs need to try and just calm things down here as we're going to get a whistle. I tell you, the only thing the refs are calling right now are offsides and icing. But this is... The, buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. You thought the first and second periods were physical. This is going to take one heck of a pretty grimy turn here for this third period especially with it going down to the wire score wise 16 to 28 the shot ratio is still in favor of Bucknell they'll win the draw but it comes back over to Cotrambone and I was just looking back on that hit there with what happened with Kennedy and it was McNally who actually has the puck now who was the one who cross checked him that went in close saved there by Sweeney and he's able to hold on and, and after McNally, the play we've got some shoving going on and McNally cross check Catrambone after the play and you got to imagine he'll go to the box here late and it will be McNally going for cross checking so it'll be a power play opportunity for Widener and that's a double bonus as McNally has been one of the best penalty killers for this Bucknell team tonight so an extra added oomph for this Widener's team. And it's not a must-score opportunity, but you know, like, you've got the momentum. You've got your goaltender with a hot hand right now. And overall, just trying to put as much rubber on Strickler as you can, and you're golden, Pony Boy. And to boot on that, a little bit of retribution there for Widener, as this time it's called a cross-checked. A cross check there on McNally. They did. Second to us, uh, now he's able to finally get called on that one because the one on Kennedy was missed as that one is blocked and it comes out of the zone. Yeah, good block there from Arbach as he blocks Zagrocki's shot. Zagrocki's still with the puck. He'll dish it up to Bonzal. 
with 136 to go in the man advantage. No shot on this power play yet. Bonsall back with it, has a little bit of space, but is blocked there by Graney. Wines with it, sends it up in the slot to Zagraki. Back over to Lacane. 120 to go in the man advantage. Shot was blocked, but it comes back to Wines. He'll corral it and give it to Lacane. Back to Wines. Wines looking for the backdoor pass. Zagraki couldn't get any mustard on the shot. He comes back with it. That one blocked again, and it'll trickle out in the neutral territory. And I'm not sure if you saw it, Trey. And a hooking call against Widener. And once again, it'll be four on four here for the next minute and se one second. And this is where Widener has been kicking themselves in the rear end here all night long has been taking penalties while on the power play. And Zagraki took off his helmet and threw it into the penalty box after taking that penalty end. I don't know if you saw it, Trey. I was about to mention it. Look who's down over on the bench. He's back. Kennedy back out on the bench. Great to see him coming back so quickly after he was, after he was down for a while, coming right back out to try and maybe get one more shift in before the end of this period. Great to see him back out on the bench. So before on four for the rest of this period, Ogborn trying to stick it up as that shot was blocked as right in front. Shot going wide, that was Bird Leitner looking for his second of the game. But last minute of play in the second period, Wines trying to take advantage of the loose change, but he can't get there in time. Bonzal will get it up to Wines, 22 seconds to go in the four on four. Wines lost the puck. And a two on three opportunity for Bucknell in the other direction. Thorpe with it, Simchick to his left. Thorpe looking for it, was wanted Simchick in the low slot. Ogborn will stick it up where it's kept in the zone there by Bird Leitner. Penalty time is, our four on four time is up. Now it's a power play for Bucknell and looking for one last chance here with 50 seconds to go in penalty time, but under 10 seconds to go in the period. That one will be sent the length of the ice and that will do it a scoreless second period, but nonetheless, an exciting one. And refs don't want a repeat of what happened during the last intermission, so Bucknell will go to the locker room first and then Widener, but an exciting physical period. The only thing missing, Corolo, goal scoring. Yeah, for sure. Just missing a goal there in that period was a good period there for both teams, really. Only six shots on goal for Widener through that period. But still a, a good period overall. A lot of penalty minutes for both teams, which we kind of expected coming in to this second period anyway. We'll have to see what happens in the third period. But either way, we're going to step aside, take a short break. And when we come back, we'll have the third period of action for you.
40 minutes down, 20 to go in a very chippy game here between Ryden or Widener and Bucknell as we bring you back for coverage of the tonight's or the coverage of the third period of tonight's AAU Widener hockey action between the Pride and the Bison. Trey Wright alongside Corolla Pascal and you know Valentine's Day is coming up and neither of these team or teams are showing each other any love. Oh that is that is for sure as we get set for this third period here. Still waiting on Widener to come out onto the ice here. Bucknell already all out there. As now the pride finally trickling out on to the frozen sheet here. 20 minutes left to go here in the game. 38 seconds left on the clock here on the penalty. Shots 30 to 16 through this one as Zagraki goes back to the box in favor of Bucknell. As we get ready for the third period here, just want to say a quick thank you for tuning into this one once again. Thank you for joining us here this evening. And if you joined us earlier for our coverage of Rutgers AAU earlier today, thank you for doing so. And big shout out to our, uh, to our co-workers, John, Andrew, and Scotty, covering that game for us. Takes a village to run a great company like this and hey only in our first year the sky's the limit not even a full year yet only really started about six months about six months or so really officially formed as a true company in october but did the jpl all last year under the bsb name but glad to be here doing these widener games and all the games that we cover so far through our first year as we get set for the third period here 100 percent 38 seconds to go in the Zagraki Minor. It's a face-off win for Bucknell. Controlled by the Bison. Back in the other direction is McNally. McNally will send it across ice. Back over to Thorpe. Thorpe looking for a lane, and that one's kick saved there by Sweeney. It'll go the length of the ice, and that might do it for this abbreviated power play. And Going into the third period, Widener's got 18 penalty minutes, Bucknell with 23, 10 of those coming on the Jake Rogers game misconduct, so he will not be returning to the ice after his hit on, uh, I think that was Poole or Gilbert in the first period, but nonetheless, penalty time is up, another successful uh, kill for the Pride. And Man. also, we were able to find out what happened at the end of the first period there as walking in Lacane, oh! he fires it off the crossbar. That was nearly a bar down beauty there for Lacane's second of the night, but like you were set, what, like you were touching on before he ring the iron. Oh, we'll get touch back on it as Lacane goes back the other way, looking for it again. Lacane trying to look for Zagraki right in front. They score! Zagraki on the doorstep, but I think it's going to be Lacane who was able to put it in for his second of the night. Yeah, Lacane able to drive around on that wraparound opportunity, able to just cut around the net quickly, and I think this might end up getting waved off here. Referees are going to talk this over, and I wonder if this gets waved off. I mean, Goal was taken off of the scoreboard, so we'll have to see what happens here. I think the net might have came, up, came off. Mike Kennedy's still talking over, and now they're gonna keep talking it over. So now that we got a stoppage, we'll mention what happened back in the first intermission. Apparently Jake Rogers, apparently cross-checked Matthew Kennedy in the head. Coming back uh, between the locker rooms in the first intermission, Stone Hallworth took, took exception to that, gave him a whack, and it started a shoving match between the two teams. So they were fired up after that first intermission, and. And I think no, gonna, I uh, think th this uh, might be called no goal here. I mean, the, in all fairness, I think the net did come off a split second before Zagraki put it in. They're still screaming at each other. Now the fans getting into it. And the other coach is down there at the bench getting involved here as well. As... We still try and figure this one out here. It looks like the referees are doing the same. And I think this is, this goal is going to be waved off. Lacane will not get his second here as the faceoff will end up to the left 
of Strickler here. So no goal on the play. We continue on, stay deadlocked at one. Yeah, that would have been a great one for Lacane's second of the night as he crashes the net, loses his stick, and Strickler will throw it into the corner, and he's going to take a misconduct penalty. Sweeney will get off, but just as he gets to the bench, they'll whistle it dead, and Strickler will get a pair of penalty minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, that was just... That, that was, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That was a stupid play there from Will Strickler. You know, you may have hooked him, as it looks like it will be Granny going to the box. You, you, you took his stick. You know, you can just let go of it, and he can grab it back. But inside, instead, he decides to just javelin it into the opposite corner, and you put your uh, team down a man. But nonetheless, it'll be Grainy in the box serving the misconduct. And it'll be another power play opportunity for Widener. They've yet to score on the man advantage here tonight. They're 0 for 4 on it. We're able to score shorthanded earlier in the game as Kennedy back out on the ice. That one blocked in front. And like you were saying, Trey, haven't been able to score on the man advantage so far. Looking to finally pot one home on the power play on this chance. Lacane will get it up to Wines. PP1 on the ice right now as he is sticked in there by James Sondi. Strug with it. He'll send it the length of the ice. Ogborn trying to race back for it. He is hounded there by McNally. McNally will send him into the half wall. Meanwhile, Kennedy trying to get on his horse, but it comes back over to Ogborn. Ogborn starts in his own end. Buck 14 to go in the man advantage. Sandy will take that back for it and has sent the length of the ice again. Sweeney will send it up into the neutral zone where it's up to Bonsall. Bonsall looking for options. He puts one on that. That one sticked aside into the corner. Yeah, they were looking for Fontaine there on the redirect in the middle as this comes out once again. Conway trying to take it away and it comes back to Kennedy again. Great to see him back on the ice after taking a Scary cross check there from McNally in the second period. Bonsall skating over the blue line. He deeks a couple of bison. That one gloved down by Strickler. And we'll get a stoppage with 33 seconds to go in the man advantage. And Bonsall got shoved at the end of that end. I think Bonsall's going to get, or Zagrocki might get tossed into the box here. And, and he's going to get it unsportsmanlike. That's, I think, the third time here on the power play that Widener has just messed themselves up here. buttocks, unfortunately. So it'll be another four on four as the Grocky will take his third penalty of the night. I think all three of those coming on power play opportunity, so he's really sucking the life out of this Widener power play. But it'll be four on four. Widener will win the draw. It's kept in there by... Bird Leitner. Kennedy up with it, trying to spring Fontaine, but it scorched right through him. They'll wave off icing. Now Fontaine trying to get it. Four on four. Right there. It was on the doorstep, but it just goes wide. Back the other way. Here comes Bucknell. Kennedy will take it away. He is clipped down. Widener bench is incensed. Scramble forward as Conway gets dogged there at the blue line, but he's fighting for it. He's able to move it up. Conway wanted a holding penalty against Simchik. And that one redirected off the glass right in front. Shot from Ratner. Didn't have any mustard on it. Simchik with it. Will rim it along the half wall. He'll find Evzelius, where it tracks back into neutral territory for Sandy. Sandy will stick it up to Ratner. That one a huge hit by Gilbert at the blue line. No call on the play. That one comes back to the neutral zone as four on four time is up. 52 seconds to go in the Bucknell penalty. Power play rather. That was a green light check there from Gilbert. Just crushing a man at the blue line as that one gloved down by Sweeney. But that hit by Gilbert. Fantastic check to just come up and lay the boom right at his own blue line and get that puck out of the zone. And the most important part about that, it was a clean hit. The last thing you want to do if you're Widener is take penalties because these penalty killers have been on the ice for a lot of time in this game. 
Yeah, but it was it was perfectly timed, executed perfectly. It was a clean hit as it's still in the zone here. As that one redirected in on oh. goal. Sweeney able to grab that one. A huge save there by Sweeney able to hold on. Bobbling it a little bit in the center field, but it'll make the out for the line drive. 15.44 to go in this third period. Still deadlocked at one. We thought it was 2-1 for a moment, but Lacane's second of the night was called off. Lacane still with the only goal for the Pride tonight. Sam Bird Leitner with the only goal for Bucknell. Ogborn stick breaks. He's trying to soccer kick it out. That was cleared out of the zone. Ogborn racing back to replace him is Kennedy. Ogborn looking for a twig on the bench. Meanwhile, it's Sandy behind his own cage. He's back with the puck. He'll send it up to Ratner, but it's taken there by Kennedy. Kennedy will send it the length of the frozen sheet where it comes back over to Stricker. And that will do it. We're back to five on five now as two players go down in the middle there for Widener. And now Four we're going to get another penalty. And, and it's going to be a tripping call. I'm not sure who it's going to be against. I think it might be Bucknell going to the box. Yeah, it's going to be Bucknell here going to the sin bin. And that It'll one. It'll be Sandy. Yeah, it's going to be Sandy going to the penalty box here for a tripping. So we've spent a majority of this period on either a Bucknell penalty or a Widener penalty or four on four. And now Seems we're like we spend most of this game, honestly. And now we're going to get a timeout here from Widener with 15 minutes and one second to go in this third period. It's been a slow one, but it's been an exciting one. 19 to 32, the shots on goal. Ryan Sweeney only letting one in so far. Same with Will Strickler. And another power play opportunity for the Pride late in this game. Yeah, five minutes gone here in this third period. The coach is down over on the bench for the Pride. Yeah, they're trying to get this team galvanized. They're trying to say, hey, this game's not over. Nowhere near over. Let's kick some faces in like we've been doing all night long. Take care of business. And like I said at the top of the show, try and get a win here, especially in this interdivisional game against Bucknell. It'll be McCain at the dot for the Pride. Ratner at the dot for the Bison. Here we go, off the draw. It's a win by Bucknell. Thorpe will clear it out, and they start with a clear. Sweeney will slow it down for Ogborn. He'll take it behind his own cage. Already 12 seconds gone in the penalty. Kennedy will send it up ice to McCain. McCain will dish it back to Kennedy. Kennedy, the fans want one. He puts one, but it just goes wide. McCain now in the corner. McCain looking for someone at the doorstep that was Bonzal, but he couldn't get a shot off, and that one will nearly hit Sandy in the box. He'll rifle around for the puck and just uh, throw it on the ice there with 30 seconds gone in this man advantage. And when Widener was coming up the ice there, I actually noticed something on that play. So when both the Widener players came around the ice, it was Kennedy and Ogborn who were down there looking to try and break out the play and get going the other way. Something I saw and something that I noticed, going back to some rider days from a, from a while back, Coach Martino down on the bench drawing up a play that I've seen the Bronx do a couple times on the power play, even this year, where they do the fake pass, they, leave, they do the fake leave off for the player trying to streak out of the zone quickly, and then Kennedy did that fake pass. Ogborn was the one with the puck, and, and then Kennedy streaks all the way up the ice, gets that pass back, and then tries to put one in on goal. Perfectly drawn up and almost executed perfectly. Almost is only, is only good in horseshoes and hand grenades, but yeah, that fooled me as well. So I'm glad that you brought it up. A Little bit of a Ryder special with uh, Mike Kennedy going to Ryder all those years ago. Now the head coach of this Widener team. Ogborn will send it up to Lacane. Under a minute left in the power play for the Pride. Wines will keep it in at the zone. 
but he loses it. Now it's taken back by Evzelius. Cleared back, not quite there. Kennedy now with it. Kennedy up to Lacane. Lacane will rim it around, dump and chase here as Strickler lost it right in front. Bonsall nearly had a backhanded shot, but Strickler got there in the nick of time. Now back the other direction. Here comes Strug. Back on Sweeney. Beautiful save by Ryan Sweeney. But it's going to be a hooking call against the Pride. And once again, Widener shooting themselves in the foot. It's interference. And I think it might be Fontaine. No, it's going to be Zagraki going to the box again for the fourth time tonight. And want to just a quickly apologize for the camera issues. Game taking so long, we're currently running out of battery in our camera, so we're trying to make it all last. If we have to, at the very end of it, if this game either takes too long or ends up going into overtime and our batteries end up running out, we'll go radio broadcast for you guys. But I'll try and film on my phone at least so we get some visual Visual product for the post cut. And we've got a penalty but shot here, trying to walk in, looking. That one saved there by Sweeney. Camera comes back at the right time. And Sweeney making the big save there on Strug. Yeah, beautiful save there on Sweeney. He made the first one, then it was a penalty shot. And then Sweeney with the beautiful pad save there. And that is the momentum you need to have if you're Widener. If you're the skaters on that Widener team, your goaltender has come up so freaking big in this game, you need to put a shot in the back of the net on the other end of the ice. So it'll be a face-off to the left-hand side of Sweeney, who is 31 for 32 so far tonight. An excellent game so far for the senior. Off the draw, it's won by Widener. Ogborn will take it. Shot through traffic, will not get on net. Zagraki up to Ogborn. Ogborn, one of the assistant captains on this Widener team, will stick it and dump it in chase. It'll come back to Bird Leitner. He is hounded there by a couple of members of the Pride. Ogborn prevents it from going the length of the ice. 12.55 to go in this third period. Shot still 19 to 32 as Zagraki takes it and gives it back to Ogborn. The two tallest people on the ice as Bonzal takes a hit on the boards from Donovan. Bird Leitner will send it up ice and here comes Strug back the other way. Strug nearly had it knocked out of his hands. Excuse me, that was Brian Arbach. As two on two, Ogborn in the other direction. He had his stick lifted and is taken back by Azelius. Rimmed in the opposite zone. Bonzal, or excuse me, Zagraki with the back check. And here comes Sandy the other direction. Sandy gets knocked off his stick. Azelius is able to take it back. Azelius has a good shoulder check there, hip check, excuse me, from Zagraki. And a save. From Sweeney will stop play with 12.02 in this third period. Another stoppage. <laughs> Referees checking the net to make sure it's okay. It's on its moorings and we're good. We're good and gravy here. Ratner and Conway at the dot. Azelius will stick it along the half wall where Fontaine will collect for the pride. Bonzal will take it out of the zone, not nearly far enough for an icing. Menta streaking, trying to take it away from Azelius, but he'll send it into the neutral zone. Gilbert with it. Try to spring Poole, but Poole didn't know where the puck was. He elects to just dump it into the Bucknell zone. Menta with a shoulder check. Zagraki with it. Now Bucknell together the opposite direction. McNally had it taken off of his stick. It's brought into the Bison end. Menta trying to take it away, but it's brought back there as Conway puts a hit on Herman. 
Bucknell trying to skate east, but Gilbert will skate northeast with it and collect the puck. And now behind the play, Bucknell it doesn't go far enough for an icing as that was Latornis, I believe, who hit Gilbert behind the play. Another hit there. Wines was able to avoid the hit from behind. And now trying to spring the other direction is McNally. McNally waiting for options. He'll take it away from Bonzal. Bonzal will bring it back into center ice as we approach the midway point through this third period, still knotted up at one apiece. Catch Rambone now with it. Nearly lost it from Thorpe and he'll stick it into the neutral zone. That one rimmed along the dasher boards and it comes back to Thorpe. Thorpe looking for Simchek as he gets hit at the circle. No penalty, we continue to play on. Bucknell starting to buzz. Thorpe with the shot, he scores! Noah Thorpe, a wrister from the low high slot, and Bucknell breaks the drought. 2 1 Bison. Yeah, that was a perfect shot there. Walking into that high slot, corralling that puck and ripping that one home. A perfect shot. As Bucknell go up 2 1. Here with 10 13 left to go here in. This third period, an excellent shot there. Yeah, nasty wrister there from the high slot is will be knocked down with a high stick. So with 10 minutes left, Widener now in a little bit of panic mode. You know, Sweeney's done all he can, but it's, again, it's now up to these skaters to help him on the other end of the ice. Shot still 19 to 33. And that was Thorpe again who scored the goal. Now Ogborn through traffic goes wide. Catch Rambone gets hit behind the play. We continue to play on as a sent up. Ogborn back checking with it. He'll get it to Fontaine. Fontaine trying to get this Widener crew going. Now Lacane with it. Lacane has got one tonight already. He spins and he fires one over the net. Or comes back to Fontaine. He'll rifle it along the half wall to Zagraki. Zagraki will send it back to the point. Ogborn on net. That one a pad save there from Strickler. That'll go the length of the ice. The icing will be waved off. Widener starting with their own end under 10 minutes to go in the third period. That one will be waved off as well. Both teams kind of being on a penalty kill in terms of icing. Bucknell looking for more. Fontaine slashed after the play, no call on it. Catrambone gets tied up there in the corner. That one by Sweeney. I thought it went into the netting, but it went on the very tippy of the high glass. Conway with it. Game taking a physical turn once again as McNally takes it behind Sweeney's cage. McNally tried to find someone, but he gets the puck back. The puck knocked out of Conway's hands is intercepted there by Fontaine. Fontaine gets Zagraki up north. Zagraki puts one on net. He cannot put it directly on net. And it's taken back by Latournis. Fight for the puck in the near corner. Bonzo with it, had someone on the doorstep, but they were wearing orange instead of white and blue. And Bucknell takes it back the other way. That one airmailed into the zone by Ratner. Now eight minutes left in this contest. Bucknell leads by a goal. Weiner just trying to get it out of their own zone, but it's intercepted by the Bison. Shot right in front. Another chance right in front. Sweeney had no idea where it was, but thankfully it went nowhere near his wheelhouse. Zagraki trying to spring Lacane back the other way, but the pass too far in front. He'll outdo the icing, trying to spin around, do it himself. Bonsall was looking for the loose change, but couldn't find it in the pocket. Now a two on two the other direction, three on two if Bucknell can hurry. Back the other way, Thorpe was taken off. He was looking for his second of the night. McNally now looking for it. Takes an elbow there from Poole. Excuse me, that was Wines who he took an elbow from. We continue to play on as Wines will cover it with the glove. 7.19 to go in the third period. Widener still in need of a game-tying goal. Yeah, looking for the game winner here. 
or at least the game tire and then need a game winner here in this third period as faceoff is going to be to the right of Sweeney here. And going back to what you were saying before about Sweeney, he's done really all he can in net tonight, has saved 34 of 36. It's just the Pride just need to find a way to convert on their offensive chances as a huge hit on the opposite side bench. That was a massive hit there on Poole. Yeah, Poole got dumped there by Bird Leitner, who is doing all he can for this Bucknell team. He's the one who got the goal scoring going. As the other way, Donovan now with it, trying to extend the lead. He'll rifle that into the netting. And another stoppage with 6.45 left in the second period. And if you're Widener, you've just got to put some sustained pressure on Bucknell. And again, you can't do anything stupid. You cannot take a stupid penalty and put yourselves behind the eight ball in this. I think you can't take a penalty period here down by one. And trying to get back in this game and tie this game as we're under seven to play as this one taken away by Kat Trambone. Widener really need to try and focus on trying to gain momentum back here as we're gonna get a whistle and I think there's gonna be another penalty on the play here and I'm not sure who it's gonna be on. I think this might go against Bucknell and it's, indeed it looks like it. It's gonna be an interference against Simchik. So you get a gift here, you get a power play opportunity with 6.33 to go. Simchik, another guy that's on this, been this on this PK1 for this Bucknell unit. And, and the again, referee was actually saying that Simchik was kicking at the play, which was the interference call, which I'm a little surprised by that. He seems dumbfounded by it as Widener will go to the power play. And like you said, a bit of a gift here for Widener as that one redirects out of the zone. And Widener haven't scored on the power play tonight. Haven't scored on the power play, haven't scored on the even strength as Wines will lose control of that. It will come back to Latunas, Latornis. A you know, big, big thing that's been hurting Widener on this power play is they haven't been able to get sustained pressure in the zone because after every power play, Bucknell wins the draw and they immediately just shoot at the length of the ice. But Bonzal with it. Fontaine was at the circle or in front. Wines now looking for Ogborn right at the doorstep and the net is knocked off of its moorings. Ogborn with a great chance in the paint but he can't get it in. But even if he was going to get it, I think the net came off first. Yeah, I think if that one had ended up going into the net, that might have ended up getting called off uh, for a second time here this evening because that net did come off its moorings. But Ogborn with a great opportunity, but Strickler shutting the door with the pads, able to make the save with the pillows. As another draw in the zone. That one and they score! Right off the draw! I think that's going to be Lacane right off the face of his second of the game, and a power play goal gets it tied. What a return for Charlie Lacane, his second off the draw, and ladies and gentlemen, we are tied at two. An unassisted goal, Lacane was able to tie up Ratner at the dot, and a beauty from the circle. Knots it up back at two. What a shot. Holy jumping. That was an excellent shot there from Lacane. Able to bury it on the faceoff there. And two goals for him. What a return here in his first home game back. As that one nearly tricked Sweeney. Sweeney had the rebound as it's a power play goal for Widener to tie things up with 5.27 to go in the period. Puck comes out of the zone, but Bucknell still with possession of it. Looking to take the lead back once again. McNally, Rister, blocked there by Kennedy, comes back into the corner. Shot saved there by Sweeney, but it's rebounded and taken away there by Bucknell again. They send it in the opposite corner. Donovan able to keep it into the zone. Elter playing four corners with the puck right now. And a huge hit. Conway hitting the head, but he's able to stay on his skates. Now the other way, Mento was put in the Bucknell bench. He, he nearly went head over heels there into the bench of the Bison as 
He's shaking up on the play. And he's going to go back to the bench and try and regain his bearings here. He's going to get looked at by the trainers. Probably got hit in the stomach there. As Ogborn takes a high hit, no call on it. Refs letting them play with 4.29 to go in the game. Deadlocked at two. Kennedy will keep it in the neutral zone. He'll try and rifle it in, but it's taken away there by Bucknell. Bucknell with numbers. It's Latournis with it. He'll send it a direct shot into the glove of Sweeney and another stoppage with 4.17 to play. And we may see overtime here in this one. Not, knock on wood that potentially either team can find a way to break the deadlock here. And I'm hoping that we can have our battery survive on our camera if we do end up going to OT. We're gonna try we and make it work here. We gotta get through regular time first. We saw how much of a crawl it was as Sweeney with a good save off the draw. And he'll be piled on top of by about half the players on the ice. Sweeney, again, stand up in net, 38 uh, saves on 40 shots. Bucknell peppering this Widener goal. But Sweeney has shown up here tonight, and on the other end of the ice, his team has gifted him a game-tying goal, but we still got 4.14 to play. A short way to go, and a short time to get there. And that was a great save there by Sweeney, able to get the pad out on the quick shot there off the draw as Bucknell spin it and dump in. Latournis will send it along the half wall. It comes to catch Rambone. Kept in there by Evzelius. Sweeney out of position just for a moment. Now Thorne with it. Thorpe looking for a second of the night. I thought that went in top shelf, but it just goes wide. That one fanned on there as Lacane was trying to take it out of the zone. Puck right in front. Nobody home. Latournis lost it again. Now Lacane with it trying to spring Wines. Now Wines trying to beat out the icing. Wines could have a breakaway, but it comes over to Strickler. He'll send it back. Widener has to tag up on the delayed offside that comes back to the Bison with 3.15 to play. Avzelius still with the vulcanized rubber. He is brought down, no call on the play as he lost an edge. Simchik off of it, right in front. Sweeney looking for it, a huge save! Ryan Sweeney, you are not from this planet! As the, as the cage comes off the moorings, Ryan Sweeney looking like prime Marty Brodeur out there. But we are going to get a penalty on the play. And I think it might be going against the pride. Oh my goodness. Ryan Sweeney, put that one on your highlight reel. Probably one of the best saves I've seen in a while in transition. That is outstanding work there by Ryan Sweeney, able to get across, get that blocker there and make that save. It doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, but it's another task ahead for this penalty killing unit. Gilbert to the box for a trip. Bucknell with another power play opportunity. Another, a huge, crucial kill here for Widener to stay in this contest. That one will come out of the zone. Ogborn will rifle it out. Bonzal pass too far for him to do anything about it as Strickler will send it back. In his own zone is Bird Leitner. Bonzal loses his stick, has to rush back to get another player on the ice. As we're officially in radio broadcast mode, ladies and gentlemen, as Sweeney will cover that up and simultaneously knock the netting off. Now, thankfully, we're able to have enough battery life for the Sweeney's transition save there, but of course, overtime potentially on deck here. And the little engine that were our batteries unfortunately could not. Nonetheless, off the draw, pad save there by Sweeney. 116 to go in the period. One of the Bucknell skaters loses an edge as SBL's not able to, or he does keep that into the zone. Now it pops back out. Ratner back with it. He'll get it up to Simchik. Simchik looking for the go ahead goal. He spins around but loses it as the linesman gets hit in the head by the puck. He's able to regain back up top. 
Strickler waiting for support. 48 seconds to go in the penalty. Up to Strug. Back the other way, two on two, three on two, right in front. That one just goes over the bar. Another clear for this Widener team. Potentially two minutes left in this game. Pandering overtime. McNally in the far corner. Is looking there over to Luft. Luft wanted McNally back there for the backdoor pass, but he couldn't find it. That one through traffic goes wide. And the net will come off of its moorings once again. As we try to get the back, frantically try to get the backup camera unit on the moorings. One last chance for Bucknell to try and take this lead away with 1-12 remaining in the third period. It is coming down to the proverbial wire, or wire here at Iceworks. Face off controlled by Zagraki. Nobody knows where it is. That one, a great save there from Sweeney. That will be sent the length of the ice. Another kill by Widener. Bonso couldn't quite get there. He's trapped off sides. They have to come back up. Under a minute to play in the third period. Zagraki with it. Now Thorpe looking for his second of the evening. Thorpe in on Sweeney. That one was a great opportunity for McNally on the other side, but he couldn't get there as the puck, or as the cage rather, comes off of its moorings. Thirty-nine seconds remaining in the period. Still tied, two goals apiece. And now Ryan Sweeney in front of the bench. I'm not sure if Sweeney has an equipment malfunction. Still trying to work on everything. Camera work wise, get you a visual of the rest of the action. Our apologies here on behalf of Breakout Sports Broadcasting. We're frantically trying to get things back rolling. And now it looks like Bucknell will take their timeout with 39 seconds remaining in the third period. And again, a fantastic game in this one so far. It might not show it on the score sheet, but it has been a whale of a game between these two clubs. Old time hockey, while it's low scoring, it is still fun as H-E double hockey stick, as they say. And it's coming down to the final stretch with 39 seconds left in the third period. We'll see if we can potentially get the last couple of seconds in this game on film. But more likely than not, this game smells of overtime. And unfortunately, we are going to stick to the radio broadcast, so we'll try and have something video-wise for post. Yeah, hopefully we can maybe try and get something going. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to, though, as... So we will have at least some sort of film as a camera operator, Emily Cott, filming the rest of the game on her iPhone. <laughs> Bouncing puck behind the cage, 35 seconds ago in the third period, back the other way. Fontaine looking for it, but it's still kept in the neutral zone. Now the other way, Lacane pass a little too far for him, was looking for the hat trick. He is brought down. No call on the play. Lacane is incensed along with the Widener bench. 15 seconds ago in the game. Here comes Stru or Luft back the other direction. Rims it along the half wall to Thorpe. Fontaine 
trying to milk the rest of this clock. It'll come to wine, he'll stick it up. Lacane not able to get there. And ladies and gentlemen, it is time for overtime. Oh boy. In probably the wackiest, zaniest, and honestly, I, what other adjective can you say about this game, Corolo? that is in the English language. I might have to spe start speaking in French if I knew any <laughs> French. But yeah, we man, gotta oh try, and, try and hope this, uh, hope we can at least get some film of the OT here as Again, we get apologies. ready for the overtime. Apologies on our part for that. You know, hey, growing pains, lesson learned, you know. Stuff happens, as a wise scholar once said. Well, we usually we wouldn't have had a problem with the cameras, but we since we've had so many games this weekend so far, and on top of uh, the cold in here, our batteries ended up dying on us, unfortunately. I'm going to try and see if maybe we can get a quick screen up here as we will head to three-on-three -three overtime here between Widener and Bucknell. Trying to get a W here or the pride here in OT. Three on three, the most exciting part of hockey as this one played out to Bonzal. Two on one, the other way. Bonzal looking for Wines right there, but it goes into the netting. Wines had a great chance on the right side of the doorstep, but he couldn't get it to redirect into the net. Opening three for Widener are Wines, Bonzal, and Kennedy. And looks like Bucknell will change theirs already. It looks like Simchik, Bird Leitner, and another skater, I believe that is Luft for Bucknell. Kennedy will get it up to Bonzo. Bonzo looking for the short side goal, tried to make a toe drag move, but he's able to get it back. Has this puck taken away from him by Thorpe, and here comes Bucknell. Fresh legs on and a miscommunication from Weiner in the other end. Thorpe with it. Gets it over to Luff. Luff has an open shot. He brings it off the post. Back the other way. Thorpe is able to keep it in. Lacane is without a twig. Two on one the other way. The other direction. A huge save again by Ryan Sweeney. And Sweeney taking a second for himself. But he has been... So phenomenal in this one. On a couple of breakdowns in front of him, he is able to bail out Widener again. I think That's I'm gonna start losing my voice if he has another incredible <laughs> save like that. That's a huge save there by Sweeney. It doesn't get any bigger than that. That is perfection there for Ryan Sweeney. Fantastic save. Fontaine and Simchik at the dot, it's won by Bucknell. They put a shot, and it's another flash of the leather by Ryan Sweeney, his 47th save of the evening. Thankfully, we're able to get some sort of film on this. And getting uh, one of our photos up here of our thumbnail, trying to get this at least something on the screen for you guys. Fontaine trying to get it back the other direction, but they're stranded a two-on-one the other way. Thorpe had the puck taken away from him. Zagrocki will take it back. Weiner back in possession. 3.54 to go in overtime and counting. Ogborn couldn't corral it. Left back for the loose change, and it's going to be an icing against Weidner with 3.49 to go in overtime. And Bucknell knocking on the door here tonight, looking for the third goal. It'll be Ratner, Latornis, and Avzelius off the draw. Avzelius with the puck, he'll get it over to Latornis. Puck comes out of the zone, they'll have to reset, 3.40 and counting to go in overtime. Bucknell still with it, Avzelius will spin around. Has a little bit of open space. Ogborn trying to take it away from him. Right in front. Couldn't get on the net. Latorna still with it. Still with it. Wants someone right in front. That one will come out of the zone of Zelius to track back. 
Fresh legs on the ice, but another miscommunication of Zelius back the other direction. If Zelius in on Sweeney, he puts one loose change right in front. Bonsall back the other direction. Has a breakaway if he's got it right here in on Strickler. He's brought off of his stick. No one home the other end. Now a two on one if Widener cannot back check. Ogborn, the lone defenseman, back the other way. If Zelius on the other direction, it cannot be brought down by Ratner. Bonsall the other way. Another two on one if Widener can hurry. Ogborn trying to take it around. He takes out one. He almost had the top shelf. That would have been a nasty goal there by Ogborn. And going back to the play before, Sweeney with another insane save as Widener's still in the zone here. Wines had it, lost it. My voice is going, but I really don't care. That one comes <laughs> out of the zone. Fontaine with it. Tracking back for it is McNally. 2.20 to go in the overtime period. Back over to LaCane. He's already got two tonight, looking for the hat trick. It'll come back over to Bird Leitner. Bird Leitner will get it over to Strug. LaCane will take it. LaCane nearly had it. He will put one on net, but it just gets blocked there by Strug. I think that hit a piece of wines as well on that turnaround shot as trying to go the other way quickly is Bucknell. McNally will negate the icing. He'll spin around from Kennedy. Kennedy trying to take one, stick in front. Now winds the other direction. Wines will just try and skate it and get some fresh legs on the ice for this Widener group. A slow line change for the Pride, but they're able to get on. No, Bonsall loses an edge. A minute 30 left in the overtime period. Bird Leitner with it. Bird Leitner across ice for a Bucknell skater. That one blocked in front. Bird Leitner will track back for it. That's McNally who's got it right behind the cage. Looking for options. 70 seconds to go as Luff with it in on Sweeney. Trying to go the wraparound. Cannot get it. Hounded by a couple of Pride members. In on Sweeney. Wrap around the other end. Still waiting for it. Still trying to take it himself. Simchick now with it. Simchick had McNally at the doorstep. He'll try to rim it around where it comes back over to Luft. Under a minute to go in overtime. Simchick still with it. Gets it up to Luft. Simchick, Luft, and McNally on for Bucknell. McNally with it, up to Luft. Now back to McNally, block shot there by Bonzel, and he's able to stick it, but it's going to be an icing against Widener if Zagraki can get there in time. No, he cannot. With 25 seconds left in this overtime period, I gotta I got sit down before I pass out, Corolla. That was <laughs> pure elation, as Widener looks like They'll take a timeout. I can take over if you need to, Trey. No, I'm good. <laughs> hey, I'm not. You're calling the Rutgers game tomorrow. I'm not. I don't need a voice. This is fair. <laughs> this is fair. Hopefully, we don't have any camera issues at that game either. Knock on wood. Hope we're going to have a different camera for that game, I'm sure. As, like you said, Widener taking a timeout here. If no one scores in the final 25 seconds, we will head to a shootout here between the Pride and the Bison. A Satter. And a night late one. Can we finish before the clock strikes midnight here in this game this evening? Shots 46 to 22 in favor of the Bison. Two goals scored apiece. Lacane with two. Both on special teams. One shorthanded, one on the power play. Thorpe and Bird Leitner with the goals for Bucknell as we head out of the timeout here. Kennedy trying to rile his team up here in the final 25 seconds as we get ready for the end of this overtime. No one scores. We'll head to a shootout here between Widener and Bucknell. Would you believe that I've never seen a college shootout in person before? Really? I have not. Ah. I wasn't that senior night for Ryder last year, remember? Oh, this is true. This is true, Trey. But nonetheless, it's Fontaine off the draw, but he loses it. Thorpe trying to dig at it. Under 20 seconds to go in overtime. Thorpe loses the puck. A race for it in the corner. Lacane trying to take it, but it's back by Bird Leitner. That one right in front. Nobody was home. Avzilius will stick it in. 
Seven seconds left. Now Ogborn, if he hurries in on Strickler, three, two, one, he lost control of it. Overtime is up. Bang, bang, get out the six shooters. It's a shootout. And we will head to the shootout. First time we've had a shootout here on Breakout Sports Broadcasting this year. Unfortunately, we can't film it. Go figure. Yeah, go figure. As we will head to the shootout here. What a game it's been so far. It's been such a fantastic game. Of course, the score being deadlocked at two. You know, Bucknell getting on the board first. Lacane scoring his first of the year. Bucknell scoring again. And then Lacane on the power play. This might be the first game that doesn't result in a shootout, if I'm not mistaken, or that doesn't result in a shutout, where Widener has not recorded an even strength goal. But nonetheless, if I believe the format is correct, each team, it should start off as a best of three, or, or best of five, rather. <coughs> each team getting three chances, and then I think it's just, um, We'll just continue on we'll after just continue that until, people until we have a winner. But both goaltenders have been stout here tonight, Will Strickler and Ryan Sweeney. It'll be curious to see who starts off. As it looks like Kennedy will run back to the locker room again. Maybe going to change sticks here at the last second as we'll have this shootout here. We'll try and get the scores up for you right now currently trying to work on doing so. I wish we had a red light up here on the broadcast booth. That would be, that would certainly be nice if we had that. But it'll be Jimmy Wines, the first skater for the shootout here tonight. We don't know the career stats for people in the shootouts, but that really doesn't matter. Any given Saturday, here comes Wines. Skating in on Strickler. Wines looking for it. He tried to get there, but a good transition save from Strickler. That was a great save there by Strickler. Able to read Wines like a book. And was able to make that save with the pad. Got across. As now it's Sweeney's turn to try and come up big. And McNally to take the shot here for Bucknell on the first shootout attempt. Whistle is blown. Jimmy McNally, the team captain for this Bucknell squad, in on Sweeney. He's already saved one tonight, but he lets that one in. McNally on the shootout, and they strike first. And yeah, that's a great move there to just get inside and take that shot. Excellent, excellent move to do so. And now it's Lacane who's got two already tonight, looking for what would be his third red light of the evening. In on Strickler. Lacane in on the Bucknell goaltender. That one saved there, and Bucknell is a goal away from winning in the shootout. Lacane tried to send it five hole, but it wouldn't work. And now on is the man who kicked off the scoring tonight, looking to bookend it, Sam Bird Leitner. This could seal it here tonight. Bird Leitner in on Sweeney. Right in front, and a great toe save there from Ryan Sweeney, keeping his team alive. That is a fantastic save by Sweeney. Able to get across there with the pad and get the glove up to make that save. Excellent save there by Sweeney. And it all comes down to Connor Ogborn. Has to score. Has to score. Ogborn. Needs to score, Strickler, Ogborn, Mano Imano. Ogborn in on Strickler, he saves that! And Bucknell will win it in a shootout. A perfect two for two is Will Strickler. And Widener will fall tonight, three to two in the shootout. And an incredible effort from Ryan Sweeney coming up just short. But what a game, Carollo. Yeah, it was an excellent game for both teams. Both teams just having an, a fantastic game, a great game here 
tonight. And going back to Ryan Sweeney, played excellent in goal for the Pride. Not able to secure the victory, but a fantastic night nonetheless for him. And Wagner now falling to 7-12 and 12 on the year so far. 7-10-1. Seven, 7-10-1, seven, seven, and one. Seven, ten and one, thank you, on the year so far. It's been a tough one here for Widener to start out the new semester after falling yesterday to Kutztown and then falling tonight in the shootout. They've got one more game this weekend, but that will wrap it up for our broadcast here. Widener falling 3-2 to two in the shootout here against the Bucknell Bison. But that'll wrap it up for our broadcast here today. We'll be back again once, to, once again this weekend tomorrow as Rutgers takes on New Haven at 6 p.m. Was originally supposed to be the Rutgers senior night tomorrow evening, but that got moved to later in February on the 16th. So we'll be there for that game on the 16th as well. But either way, Rutgers tomorrow at 6 p.m. But tonight, Widener falls 3-2 in the shootout. Either way, my name is Carlo Pascal. He is Trey Wright, and have a good rest of your night, everybody.